Well, it's an out, it's outrageous. The situation is outrageous. This is, um, I would say, you know, the, the, there's a lot of talk in uh, in recent weeks about this Mikhan has root the reasonableness clause. This is unreasonable. It, it, it's it's just unreasonable that the law hasn't been enforced for 13 years. It's unreasonable that for four years, the government, various governments, have been putting this off time after time after time. Um, we would like this, the High Court of Justice to do what it said it was going to do the last time it granted an extension, and that is simply to um, hand down a final decision de- um, requiring the state to actually enforce the law and give a date for the for the point in time when we can expect the illegal squatters camp to be relocated to plots that have been prepared for them at a cost of tens of millions to the Israeli taxpayer. Do you think this is a realistic option that the court will decide that enough is enough and now uh, this encampment must be um, um, bulldozed, basically? I believe it's a reasonable uh, expectation that a government that was elected to actually bring law and order and uh, and to stand firmly for Israel's rights in Judea and Samaria in Area C uh, will do exactly what it was elected to do. I don't think that that is unreasonable. Um, I don't believe that it is unreasonable to expect that after the international community has threatened various things if Khan al-Akhmar is removed, and has actually done those things and Khan al-Akhmar hadn't been removed, that the government should say, well, at this point, you know, the threat that they're going to go to the International Criminal Court has already been uh, realized, so we don't have to worry about that. And the threat that there's going to be violence, well, there's violence anyway. So uh, uh, it's not unreasonable for us to expect the government to behave like a grown-up government and say there are national interests at stake here. We've been elected um, by the people of Israel to protect our national interests, and we're going to start at this particular spot, which is a flagship. You said plots have been prepared to relocate the uh, villagers. Um, yes. Is that the site on the other side of the main road there? No, no, no. That would be a ridiculous, uh, a ridiculous option. The site that was prepared for these uh, for all of the Bedouin from this area, from E1, is uh, on state, Israeli-owned state land just outside Abu Dis, where the rest of the Jahalin tribe already are relocated to. They would have full access to areas that are under Palestinian Authority control already and would have full access from there to their places of employment and, uh, and livelihood, both in the Palestinian-controlled areas and in Israeli-controlled areas, the plots uh, near Abu Dis have already all the infrastructure all ready for them. There was a school and a health clinic already put there have, that have been removed um, because they were being dismantled by other squatters. But the, all the infrastructure exists. There are roads, there's electricity, there's sewage, there's running water, and full access to everything that people need to live in a normal fashion and still protect the national interest of the state of Israel uh, not to give the Palestinian Authority a foothold just in the in the crucial strategic area known as E1. Isn't it the case that the villagers rejected that option because they said it was right next to a big rubbish dump? Well, it's not next to a, a rubbish bin. That's, first of all, false. They, a, ru- they, a rubbish dump? Yes, it's not near a rubbish dump either. And it, in, many years ago, there was a landfill site over there. It's now perfectly, it's been, the Israeli government sent engineers and environmental specialists to do every possible environmental check in the area. It's been all cleared for years for resettlement of people. Far better conditions than where these people are living now, on the side of a road in an area that where the uh, sewage lines of Kvaradumin collect. Uh, it's, 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 there are no excuses. And the people who really rejected all of the state of Israel's proposed uh, relocation offers isn't the people who live there, really. It is the Palestinian Authority and their European Union sponsors. Just explain to our listeners briefly, what would the strategic damage be if the government decided, OK, just let the village remain in place? It would actually give legal recognition to one of many dozens of illegal squatters camps that the Palestinian Authority has placed at specific points that would divide up Area C, that would make it impossible for 
a division of the territory uh, and essentially make Area C more or less the same as Area B and Area A, and we would lose our ability to divide the territory of Judea and Samaria in any normal fashion. It would also obstruct Israel's uh, the access between the capital of Israel, Jerusalem, and its eastern border, and the road down to the Dead Sea. It's, this, this outpost is literally on Route 1. Route 1 is the main traffic artery to and from Jerusalem. We can't afford to give up this area. Khan al-Ahmar itself is positioned specifically um, and strategically at the spot that is almost dead center, north, south, east, west, and will determine who controls that, uh, those access points and those uh, main arteries. Uh, Israel, it, it, it's, not, it's not anything like a small, innocent group of shacks. It's a very carefully, strategically placed uh, foothold for the Palestinian Authority in areas under Israeli control.